This shirt's too small. <laughs> this shirt's too small. This is what I this is what I would call a pre-pandemic shirt. Um, and it's the first thing I grabbed. So here we are. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the Mark Ryden Barbies. As you can see, I have all three of the boxes here. This is kind of a complicated story I'm gonna tell about what happened here because I did not originally intend to buy all three of them. Um, I don't, these dolls are out of my usual price range. However, the Pop Pink Barbie was the one that I was like, I need to have it. It was so expensive. It was like $350, which is usually out of my budget. I usually will budget like $200 for a collector doll is usually like my like absolute max. There have been very few cases where I've spent more than that. But this one, it was like finally worth it for me to do that. And then I also bought the yellow one, the B, because she was 150, which like still was kind of within my normal range. And I did like her. Um, so I was like, oh, it'll be nice to have like two of them. This was the one that I did not intend to have. And I'll get into how we got there. Um, but let's start with looking at the pop pink Barbie. So this is just their, the covers right now that I have stacked over here. Uh, but this is the cover for the box. The boxes are huge enormous they're very thick and so this is the cover it of course says barbie mark Ryden. and it has the cute little um lamb i think i think it's like a sheep or a dog i'm actually not sure what that creature is supposed to be the inside of the box is super cute i never see it i just kind of put this on the back just for like easy storage um but yeah so this is the box that the cover box that they come in they of course all come with a sort of um dust cover as well. I just took the dust covers off already for this video, but I, I do display them with the dust covers on now that they're here. And then, so here is the pop pink Mar Mark Ryden Barbie. I am obsessed with this doll. This is easily my new favorite doll in my entire collection. I'm so happy that I bought her. She, in my opinion, was worth $350. But let me get into what actually happened here. <laughs> Because, so I, I think it's important for people who maybe haven't bought a lot of things from Mattel Creations website to understand that Mattel Creations is not perfect. Uh, there's a lot of like regular issues that I've heard a lot of people talk about, like the website crashes. Um, it tells you things are sold out when they're not actually sold out. That's happened like a couple times, like at the release, it's like sold out. But then you look at it again later and it's there. I don't know if that's like a restocking issue or what but that happens a lot and then of course their shipping times are whenever they want so they will literally just be like shipping whenever <laughs> you know like they don't tell you they don't really give you a good idea of like when things are going to ship so that's a big complaint a lot of people have i'm just gonna kind of hold her up so you can see her she's so beautiful so i ordered this doll and the 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 b doll like i had mentioned she's got these little she's got these little friends i love this so much i love her so much She's so gorgeous, look at her face. So I ordered this doll and the bee doll. And that was back in like November, I think, was when the pre-order came for these. And then, then I'm just trying to get all the detail in the background. The background's super cool. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place. But there's a lot to talk about here because the dolls themselves are so cool. So like they deserve to be talked about. But I just really feel like I need to talk about how this actual order process worked. But I do want to look at the background here. Uh, one of my favorite details about this. So I, I also want to preface this by saying I'm not a huge Mark Ryden like fan. Like I, I'm not the most familiar with his work. I know a lot of people love these because of the Mark Ryden fandom. And I think that that's really cool as well for the people who are big Mark Ryden fans. But it's really hard to see because in mine, her purse is kind of twisted around. But the purse itself, I'm so scared I'm going to drop her. Ooh. The purse itself is like a stake on the other side. And it's right, it's hanging right in front of the little sign that says the meat show or meat show. Um, so if you're familiar with Mark Ryden's work, he did, I think it was a collection of paintings called the meat show. Um, and they're just like really cool kind of like surrealist paintings of, that are kind of, they're kind of gory honestly, but they're very meat themed. So I kind of like that he incorporated that into the pink Barbie. Um, 
What does it have to do with the rest of the design? I'm not super sure. I think it's more of just like a referential thing for people who are familiar with his work. But there's so much cool stuff in here. Like, I don't even know what half of it means. Like, like there's like a little inscription on the brick there. This is, it kind of reminds me of like, if you're familiar with like Renaissance art, um, it reminds me a lot of like Hieronymus Bosch's work with all the like, it's like a big painting of a bunch of like little detailed things. You've really got to get in there to see all of the symbolism. It's very beautiful. Um, I know that this kind of also pulls for a lot of from like surrealism and you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and also like pop art. So that's kind of just his style and it's, it works so well with Barbie. It's really the pink for me. I'm a big fan of pink, so I had to get her. Like she was so worth it just for that reason. So anyway, back to what happened with me ordering these dolls. So I ordered this one and then I ordered the yellow one, which we're gonna look at in a second. And I waited, you know, however long, one to five months, whatever long it usually takes. I think I ordered these in November, they came in January. So it's at about three months. Not a horrible wait, but that's kind of like standard for Mattel Creations. They just arrive one day. And what I thought I was getting was this. What came instead was this one. This doll set retailed at $500, which is like way out of my price range, right? I said like, I'm gonna pay, this is the inside of the case, by the way. And then of course the, bottom has the standard Mattel stuff. Um, these boxes are so cool. Like the boxes themselves are really cool. So I'm expecting to get my pop pink Barbie and instead this shows up. Now, I didn't order these dolls, not because I didn't like them, but because they were $500. <laughs> so for me, $500 for a set of dolls is kind of like way out of my price range, especially if I'm kind of like, I wasn't in love with these. Oh, I want to show the back too. All the backs look pretty much the same, but It just has a picture of, of the artist, Mark Ryden. It has all the branding stuff. And then it also does have a write-up. I think it's the same for each doll, but I'll just put that there if you want to read it. Because some of, the, some of the, the stuff that Mark Ryden himself wrote, I don't think this is actually his writing, but some of the stuff he wrote for this collection is really cool. So if you look at his, if you follow him on Instagram and stuff, he did a lot of posts about this and talked a lot about his design process. This one in particular, I think was inspired by, it had something to do with Salvador Dali. He did some sort of like black and white surrealist ball. And then Mark Ryden himself, I think, tried to recreate that in real life or something at some point in time. And then this doll's kind of inspired by that concept. Like I said, I'm not the biggest like Mark Ryden scholar. I'm not the most familiar with his work compared to a lot of other people. So I just know what I know from what he said in his Instagram posts about these dolls. So I don't really know too much about his actual background and history um, other than I've seen some of his paintings occasionally. But super cool. These are very beautiful. Um, do I think this was worth $500? Like. I don't know. <laughs> that's that's where we kind of get into the like, ooh, $500 is a lot of money for dolls. I will say it is two. It is a two set. So technically it's $250 per doll. And technically it's a little cheaper because they do come with this little like, um, I think he calls it the Oculus in the center. Their little like command center. Uh, very cool. It's really cool. There, there's no, I have no real complaints about the dolls, except I think they were very pricey. But also I know that collaborations with an artist of this like prestige level, it's pricey. Like, so I don't, I, I think a lot of people complain about these dolls price range, but you have to remember like, this is like a, a legit, like famous painter, designer, artist, you know, that they're, they're collaborating with. So it's gonna be expensive. They are also, I believe made of the silkstone material. Yeah, they're hard. They're really solid. Uh, these also have the hairnet still on them. The pink Barbie, I kind of peeled her hairnet back, but these two I haven't really touched yet. And the reason for that, which I'm gonna continue my story now, <laughs> sorry, the story's been so disjointed, but, so I got these instead of the one I actually ordered. The doll I paid $350 for that I really wanted. A doll that sold out almost instantly. So despite the fact that these were actually more valuable and were a higher price point, I was actually devastated. I was so upset because I was like, oh, if they sent this to me, that means they probably sent my pink one to somebody else who ordered this, which I don't know if that's really how it works, but that's just my assumption because they were all sold out. So I assume they didn't really have any left, but they probably had some left. I don't know. I don't really know how that works, but I called Mattel and I was like, Hey, you guys messed up the order. I got this doll when I was supposed to get the other one. And 
the representative was like, okay, so we can put you on a wait list to get the one you actually ordered, but you have to call us back in a couple days and just confirm that we have one for you. So I was put on the list. I called back in a couple days and then the representative I spoke to that day basically told me that probably... <laughs> she basically said like they probably have one at the warehouse but for me to get it I first have to send back this doll so at this point I'm weighing my options because I'm looking at this and I'm like mm, I like these but I don't like them as much as the pink one and then I'm looking at eBay listings and I'm seeing that this doll set is going for like I don't know, seven, eight hundred dollars. People are listing it for like a thousand dollars. I don't think anyone's gonna pay a thousand dollars for it. But at the moment, like realistically, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, if I just sold this on eBay right now, I would make a profit because I paid three hundred and fifty dollars. But then I wouldn't have the one that I really f wanted. <laughs> so then I'm looking at her price on eBay and she's going for like six hundred. So I'm kind of going back and forth and I'm like, do I take the chance of mailing back this doll to Mattel in the hope? that they actually send me the right one or even have one for me to begin with? Or do I keep it and maybe sell it on eBay and then try to do a trade or something like that? So as you can see, I have the pink Barbie. So what I ended up doing was I just ended up buying her on eBay. <laughs> I'm still a little bit on the fence about whether or not I will keep these. I'm gonna be honest, as I've kept them, they've really grown on me. I found a really nice place to display them. And now, since I have all three of them, it's a really cool set and they just look so good together. So I'm really on the fence about actually ever getting rid of these, but that my original thought was, well, if I, you know, buy the pink one for $600 and then sell this one for $800, then at the end of the day, I kind of made a profit. Not really, because eBay is going to take like $100 or more for fees and taxes. And it's a whole thing. And then shipping is going to be so much money. So that was the thing that I kept going back and forth. I was like, if I buy and sell this, if I sell this one on eBay, buy the pink one, I might break even and get the one that I ordered. Anyway, I toiled over this for weeks. As you can see, I didn't end up returning this to Mattel. By the way, they told me I don't have to, so I also just want to make that clear. <laughs> when I first called and I was like, what do I do? They said, well, since it's a more valuable doll and it was our mistake, if you want to keep it, you can just keep it. Which I appreciate them like making that clear because like obviously, I mean, what are they going to do? Come to my house and take it? But, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, like I, they could have been like more rude about it and been like, hey, can you please send that back? Like that was, you know, like we really need it. But of course they don't care because it's Mattel. They've got millions of dollars. What, what's you know what's the difference $150 difference to them they don't really care but so let me get into the detail I'm sorry we into the detail of the actual obelisk thing the like um the the oculus sorry uh it actually has like the raised eyeballs it's very cool and then the eyeballs of course match the skirt uh on the one is this the left on the left side <laughs> sorry what are the directions um so the the eyeballs match the the skirt on the left and then the skirt on the right has a different motif all the motifs are very cool too there's like cheese uh key uh moon bell it's a bunch of like sort of surrealist symbolism um very cool stuff I like this doll a lot, my, but I have this sort of issue where sometimes when I see a doll on my shelf and I think like, oh, that's going on eBay for like an incredible amount of money. Like, do I just want to ha have that money instead <laughs> and like buy more dolls? So the way I look at it is the pink Barbie. While, so I only paid $350 because I ordered the pink one. I got this one, which retailed at $500. So in sort of a roundabout way, uh, I paid $350 for this one, and then I paid $600 for the pink one, just for complete transparency. I bought it from an eBay seller. Um, so I paid like double the retail price, but only $100 more than the retail price for this one. So at the end of the day, I ended up getting all three of them for only $100 more than what if I had just bought them originally together. So I don't feel horrible about it. And honestly, when I first got that pink doll, I know we're looking at the, the black and white one now. <laughs> when I first got the pink one and I opened it up the other day, I think that was like a day or two ago, I almost cried. I w it was, I just love it so much. So I don't hate that I spent the money on it. It just, I hate that I had to do that, but I also don't mind it so much because I ended up getting this one as well. And honestly, these are great. So let me kind of move on though, because I want to talk about the, uh, the bee. So for the Barbie bee doll, this is her cover. Uh, it's got a cute little bee. I really like the art on this one. I mean, the art on each of them is cool, but this one's really cool. I like that there's a whole little bee on a little flower. 
Barbie, Mark Ryden, and then the inside is this beautiful floral pattern that I'm, I'm sure Mark Ryden painted himself. From what I understand, he likes to have a lot of control over his projects, so I can almost guarantee every element of these was probably hand-painted by him, which, once again, is why these are so expensive. So when people like to complain about the price, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, I'm not trying to, like, suck Mattel or anything, but I'm just saying that, like, having an artist that's well-known like him do something like this where he's doing all of the the paintings and the doll designs and all of that stuff I, he's a very hands-on person i am sure that it probably cost mattel a lot to work with him but i'm also sure they probably both made a ton of money off of it so i i get it from both ways you know what i mean like they're they're making money over at mattel and i'm sure he got paid quite well for this but look how gorgeous she is i love her so much oh my god I love this one. This one's a little goofy, but I kind of like that. Like, I like camp. I really like camp. I like it when it's done in this sort of like high fashion-y kind of way. Uh, let's take a look back here. So once again, there's this portrait, Mark Ryden Barbie, uh, Barbie B doll, yeah. And then there's the write-up. I think that's the same write-up. Oh, okay, so the second paragraph is specifically about the Barbie B. Okay, so once we're done with this, I'll go back to the pink one so you guys can read that if you want to. But I love this one. This one was, she was kind of an easy, a no-brainer for me. Like I said, this one retailed at about $150, which is still a lot of money. I'm not trying to say that's not a lot of money for a doll, but still it's like, it's a collector doll and these tend to be about a hundred, like nowadays a collector. If you want to get a collector doll that's halfway decent from any company, you're paying a hundred dollars. Even Rainbow High Dolls are $100 now, so I, I'm not mad about the price of this specific one. Um, the other two I felt like were a little bit pricey, like I said. But also, like I said, I get it. It's a, it's a brand collaboration with a really famous artist. And I think there's a lot of like Mark Ryden fans who probably wanted these dolls as well. I can only assume these dolls weren't just purchased by doll collectors. Yeah, she's gorgeous. She's really high quality too. I mean, the, the fabrics on these are, are great. There's no complaints there. She has the nostalgic uh, like Barbie face mold, but painted in this sort of like surrealist way. So cool. She does have these little plastic wings as well. They're kind of like a hard plastic. Um, they seem a little delicate. I can see from this angle that it also does say on the back of them, Mark Ryden, I think. You can see like the edge of his name. Um, but yeah, these are never coming out of the box. These are all staying in the box. I think this is the kind of doll where I, I want to make it clear. I don't care what people do with their dolls. I know a lot of people are like, you shouldn't take dolls out of the box. I think that's silly. Like if you buy this, you want to take it out of the box. Absolutely do. I personally like when a doll comes as like a full display with like a, you know, like this is the scenery is beautiful. The packaging is gorgeous. I love this. This is my favorite kind of doll. It's like a collector doll in a nice box in a display already like preset. I don't have to do anything. I just open up the cover and put her on a shelf. I like that. That's my preference because I just, I like when it's all done for me. <laughs> but I know a lot of people love to customize and pose and, and take photos and all that stuff. Um, I find that Barbies usually aren't the best for that anyway because they usually lack articulation. But if you do do that anyway, like good for you. Um, I personally am just going to keep all of these in the box. But let me one more time go back to our pink girl over here because I really want to also make sure you guys can read the write-up on the back if you want to right there so the second paragraph seems to be specifically about each doll so you can pause that and read it if you want to yeah they're just simple little write-ups I know he, he talked a lot more about the design process on his Instagram though so if you do want to know more about like what does all this mean there's a little bit more information there I will say his his actual writings are like very like poetic and kind of like uh, they're just kind of like very artsy <laughs> which is fine um but it's if you're looking for like a logical description of like yeah i used um the i don't know what's what's going on back here like yeah i used the flower pot with the sad face to convey the impact that plastic house on the environment like you're not going to get that kind of stuff from his write-ups <laughs> it's going to be a little bit more um, a little bit more like esoteric uh, which i appreciate as well i just realized the actual like um i think it's supposed to be a sheep it might be a dog i've heard people call this a dog i've never seen a dog that looks like that but i assume this is like a, a sheep or something uh, it's actually flocked it's hard to see in fact you can't really see it at all but the the fur part is actually flocking which is cool and then 
The flowers are really cool too. I love this doll. I love her so much. Like she was worth every penny. She was worth every single penny. She's uh, officially my new favorite, like in my entire collection, I think, which is saying a lot because I have some dolls in my collection that are like super sentimental. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to make it, I just wanted to tell everybody that story. But Mattel Creations website can be tricky. I think everybody knows that already, but if you're newer to using their website, or maybe you just don't, I know a lot of people just refuse to use it, um, because, and, I, and I get it because it is kind of difficult, um, but I just wanted to make it clear that like, I paid $350 for this doll, and they sent me a completely different doll. Granted, it was of a similar, actually higher value, but still, when you're paying $350 like for a doll, I mean, it's a doll, right? It's not like... Uh, I don't know, it's not like a, a pack of like printer paper or something. Like it's not like I can replace one for the other and there's no big difference. It's a completely different doll. It's a completely different experience. So I, I just, I it's a big deal to me. I was really annoyed. I also, between the two phone calls, probably spent a total of 40 minutes on the phone with Mattel, which amounted to me not even returning it in, in the end anyway, because I just didn't trust them enough to do it. But I just wanted to make that all abundantly clear to anybody who's just curious um but it, regardless i'm so happy with each and every one of these dolls i think the quality is incredible i think the price point is getting to a point where they're making the dolls less accessible which i don't like personally i'm the kind of person where i i wouldn't care if this doll was a mass-produced doll that you could buy at target for 50 dollars and everybody had one you know what i mean like i know that obviously this is a higher quality than your average like 50 dollars doll but i guess what i'm trying to say is that i don't collect for exclusivity i collect because i like the doll and i will never buy a doll just because it's rare or because people want it i buy it because i want it so I would love it if these dolls were more accessible, but I know that that doesn't really benefit Mattel as much as like we make 20,000 and you pay $500 for them. Like I, I get that that benefits them a little more. So that's what they're going to do. And, and that's fine. And, and we don't really have a choice. It's like either buy them or don't buy them. That's your choice. And I wanted these enough to buy them. So here we are. I love them so much. Um, the only other thing I wanted to ask is if anyone else got these, they do have hair nets. There's like, you can kind of see, I took her hairnet like off sort of, but it's kind of like, it's kind of like dangling behind her hair. I couldn't get it off. It seems like they put the hairnet on their hair and then like tacked them into the package. And I actually can't figure out how to get the hairnet off of them. And I'm afraid to kind of like mess up their hair. So I'm wondering like, do I have to cut this out of her hair? If I do have to cut it off, eh, it is what it is. I kind of have it hidden well enough where like, I don't really notice it, but it is a little bit annoying when I get up and close. But, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I still have some more Barbies to go through, but I also have a ton of stuff to unbox. Uh, and I also, I'm gonna do a video on Integrity Toys dolls soon. So uh, stay tuned for that if you like that kind of stuff. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And bye bye mm -hmm.